نحمد و نسلی و نسلم علی رسول الکریم اما بعد As a Muslim, we should know that all trials and tribulations come from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in Quran, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها Allah does not burden people for more, for more than what they can bear. Which means that whatever calamity befalls a believer, they should know that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for certain reason we might not understand the wisdom of. We can try and understand some of them, but there's always a lot of benef- benefits to be had. And this is a test for believers. Allah wants to test everyone. And in that test, we have to be successful. Because that is a proof that we have believed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his teaching, in his books, in his prophets, from the depth of our heart. Not because... Many people are doing it, so let's just do it. Not because we are born in a Muslim family. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put me in a trial, in a tough time, what should I do to help myself? How should I come out of it? I'm being tested. I need to find the most appropriate way. The way that would take me closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is the sole reason of testing. To see, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would say in Quran, that you would be tested to see whether you are a true believer or you are just a hypocrite. You claim to be a lover of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You claim to be a true servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And yet, you follow your whims and desires, you follow the command of shaitan and your nafs. So is that a true love with Allah? Is that a true relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Allah says, أَحَسِبَ النَّاسُ أَنْ يَقُولُوا آمَنَّا وَهُمْ لَا يُفْتَنُونَ Do people believe that they would say we believe in Allah and they will be left without being tested and trialed? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put on him as a condition that he would definitely, most definitely test everyone to check their claim, to prove their claim. Obviously Allah knows, it is for them to know. So on the day of judgment, they would know exactly what they have done. They can't deny it. So as a sensible person, one should try and find out the respite in Allah, not against him. So, oh Allah, you have given me as though we are saying this with our action. Oh Allah, since you put me in this tough trial, in this tough situation, I'm not going to resort to you. I would rather run away from you. And if someone does it like that, you could imagine what would happen to the person. They would not get any help from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, they would end up being in a worse situation. So they have got trouble in this world and in the trial they fail miserably and they would be in punishment in the life hereafter for committing those sins and they would say Ya Allah I did it because I found that helpful I said did you not know that I could help you and the way you could have come close to me through certain actions so the tranquility that you were looking for was only in my zikr in my remembrance what those haram means did to you was actually to make it even worse only to make you crave for more and more and more till the point that you became completely desensitized to it and it wouldn't work so you need higher dose to get the same kick same response so you were in that downward spiral rather than coming out of that whirlpool. You should have resorted to scholars. You should have resort, resorted, to, resorted to the pious people. Quran, Sunnah of Rasulullah How much trauma the Sahaba had. How much tough time they've been through. There were companions who lost every, everything they had. 
Allah says that they have actually sacrificed everything for the sake of Allah, yet they were trembling out of fear that we haven't done much. Such is the attitude of a believer. Not that they either say and show their anger, distrust in Allah by resorting to haram stuff. As though we are trying to say, you know what, this is what I would do. Because you are the one who didn't help me at that time. You caused me to be in that tr- tough time. Now I'm going to resort to her. So do we think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would help us through that? Obviously not. So we are in a way causing ourselves more danger. It is like if you, through a loving person, behave badly or misbehave or do something that would even displease them further, they're not going to help you. They would rather be distant from you. So we shouldn't be falling prey to our nafs and shaitan and committing haram to help one out from say a bad habit you do not do another bad habit to have witnessed all those bad experiences bad episodes with the domestic violence among the parents and now you would having alcohol or haram stuff do you think the people after you or around you would find it useful or beneficial are you not doing the same thing that you are actually running away from the thing that you think has caused you a lot of trouble stress and distress a lot of disappointment and frustration the very same ditch you're going into and causing others around you to suffer from the same or in the same way as you did. And at the same time, you're feeling that actually I am showing my resentment against their action, my parents' action. Are you really? Aren't you causing, aren't you doing the same thing, exactly the same thing? Yeah, in a different form. Maybe not with domestic violence, but with something else. How much have you lost through that? How much through your action are people affected around you? Your friends, your family, your work, your skills that you could have done better with are being just futile, not being used in the best possible way. And how much connection do you get? So this is worldly loss. What about the life you're after? Aren't you through not having the trust in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fleeing towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala getting wrapped in the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you're in dire need of that more so than ever before when you're broken like that and then you're actually running away from the very cure and the only cure which is the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the love from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the connection. So Allah did it all to bring you close to Him, but you opted to go away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even further. How is that going to help you in any way? Now you must feel that, you know, what do I do? You know what? Allah's mercy prevails everything. Allah just wants you to come one step towards Him. Now it's difficult to come off this, but the first step is to realize that this is haram, this is wrong, I'm committing something wrong, don't justify it. Remember, shaitan made a mistake, devil made a mistake. So did Adam alayhi salam. Adam alayhi salam, the first man ever to be created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his, with his own hands, he made a mistake, he made a mistake of eating the fruit. Adam alayhi salam made a mistake. One mistake, and one mistake is made by Iblis. Now, Iblis could actually do what he didn't do. So there's a mistake of omission, disobedience with regards to omission of the command of Allah. Well, when it comes to Adam, salam, he committed something. This is a mistake of commission. He can't undo it. Iblis had a lot of good deeds to his account. For years he has been worshipping Allah, following his command, sorting out the worldly affairs. What did Adam have to his account? 
Nothing. He didn't do anything good. He hasn't done anything positive because he didn't have a chance to do so. He was just being gifted with all the blessings. And yet, when it came to make a mistake, when it came to make a mistake, the attitude of Adam was, Oh Allah, رَبَّنَا ظَلَمْنَا أَنفُسَنَا وَإِن لَمْ تَغْفِرْ لَنَا وَتَرْحَمْنَا لَنَكُونَنَّ مِنَ الْخَاسِنَا True acceptance, complete submission. Ya Allah, I made a mistake. Ya Allah, I did it. I am from among the losers. I, I have done the wrong. If you do not help me, I will be completely destroyed. He didn't say, Ya Allah. Shaitan whispered, Ya Allah, my nafs played a game. Ya Allah, my wife didn't help me. He didn't say any of that. All he said, oh, Ya Allah, it was my mistake. That's a true realization of your mistake. That's the first step. He couldn't undo it except for accepting the mistake. The confession of the mistake. On the other hand, Iblis, despite having all the good deeds to his account, he rebelled. He started questioning Allah's judgment. Ya Allah, you shouldn't have asked me to command. You shouldn't have asked me or commanded me to bow down to Adam who is made from clay and I am superior. I am better made of fire. And apparently his judgment is right. But he forgot the who commanded you though. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah said, I know better. I'm commanding you to do something. There's a reason behind it. He f- failed to understand that. And hence, he became the losers from among the losers. Dejected. Completely biggest ever loser. He was kicked out of the kingdom. And what happened to Adam alayhi salam? He was elevated even higher. He was elevated to even the highest level of prophethood. وَلَقَدْ كَرَّمْنَا بَنِي آدَمْ That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored through Adam alayhi salam, the children of Adam alayhi salam. فَإِمَّا يَأْتِيَنَّكُمْ مِنِّي هُدًا فَمَنْ تَبِعَ هُدَايَ فَلَا خَوْفٌ عَلَيْهِمْ وَلَا هُمْ يَحْزَنُونَ So this is how we should look at our problems. Not by going into wrong companies, rather in the positive way, towards Allah. This is what Allah wants us to do. Come back to me. فَفِرُّوا إِلَى اللَّهِ Flee to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Run back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So, first step, step would be to realize that whatever I've been doing is wrong and it is not justified. Don't give yourself this comfort that or contentment that actually I had to do it. Unfortunately, I'm doing whatever is necessary. I have no other choice. If you behave that way, if you believe that, then you're never going to come out of it. So first of all, realize that I have made a mistake. There were ways, even if I don't know anything better, I should have consulted someone. Second step is to start coming off it, keep thinking about that, and trying to get some help from righteous people around you, scholars, ulama, imams, pious friends, and ask them to be in your company, or you try to be in their company every so often, and keep thinking about that, and make third step is to make sincere repentance, sincere tawbah from all that. Every time you make a mistake like that, make tawbah, even if it is a not very serious tawbah, but still do it. Even if you think that, you know, I'm just this is just lip service, I will do it tomorrow, I can't stop it. But even then, keep repenting, keep repenting. And then finally make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Allah, guide me right. Make my heart hate this bad action that you hate for the sake of Allah. Oh Allah, I just want to hate it only because you hate it. And you would see how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala slowly and gradually help you out. Then seek medical advice. Ask them to help you out. Even non-Muslims, many of them come to us and they just want to come out of it through medication, through different ways. Alhamdulillah. So it is easy if one decides. Obviously it's difficult, it's uphill journey, yet doable. Many people come out of it. Those who do not have faith, even they do it. So the one who has faith, for them it is easier to come out of it. But they have to make 
a stance. They have to make a firm resolution that they want to come out of it. Allah says in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا Those who strive in our way, we will definitely make their way easy. We show them the way. You come one step towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will come ten steps towards you. You come a hand span, Allah will come a, a cubit towards you. You come a whole cubit, Allah will come the whole hand towards you. You come to Allah walking, Allah will come to yourself, to you running at a speed. Harwalatan. And that's the love of Allah. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting for, from the slaves to return back to him. That is why he gets so happy with the person who committed a sin and then returns back to him. The famous hadith that you must have read, how the person who lost his provision on the camel in the middle of a desert and he could not find it at all when he slept, and then when he woke up, he just decided that he just felt that I'm going to die in the middle of the desert. You can't go either way. Your food, your water, everything is on that camel. The camel, camel just had a walk while you were sleeping. So the men, out of despite being completely desperate, he was trying his best to find out the camel, but couldn't get it. So then he reclined, thinking that I'll be dead soon. When he became so thirsty in the heat of the desert and then he fainted he regained his consciousness few minutes half an hour however long later only to find his camel with all the provision on it he became so joyous over joyous that he said oh Allah I can't thank you enough you are my servant and I'm your slave Allah Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in this hadith Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us Allah says he obviously he meant to say ya Allah I thank you you are my lord and I am your slave but out of his ecstasy he said the opposite because of his happiness and joy Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is more happy with the person who returns back to him than that man was when he got his provision returned back to him so we need to look at the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Find out why this is happening to you. Not what happened to me. And start moaning and groaning about no. Why it happened to me. Why me. Because Allah wants to elevate my level. And trial and test would take me even to the higher status. I need to work it. I need to find out the way. I would get some help if I don't understand. From people who could help me. Nice company. Zikr. Tasbihat. Connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Slowly and slowly weaning yourself off it. And you will see it's not that difficult. It's mind over matter. It takes just a strong stance. And you would see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would definitely help you. He's there to help you. He's waiting for you to come towards him just a little. But you have to decide first. You have to make a firm resolution that I will leave it. I would come off it. Not that, oh, you know what? This is the only way. I have to do Unfortunately, oh, whatever happened to me is all someone else's fault. So I'm just the victim. I have to. No, that is a very you know, failed mentality, a mentality which would, would never lead you to anything good in this world and in the life hereafter. May Allah give you tawfiq, give us all the tawfiq to do the right thing and mend our ways. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would be there to help us, inshallah ta'ala. We make dua for you and you make dua for us. Assalamu alaikum wa